This is Wretched Radio with Todd. Uh, evangelicals and Catholics are not together. This is Wretched Radio. Working on a brand new special that we will have ready next year. Evangelicals and Catholics not together. Why? Because there is a movement that is increasingly dismissive of theological distinctions. Let me share with you an exchange between a very high-profile evangelical. Now, I am not going to mention Rick Warren's name. I'm just going to tell you this is a high-profile evangelical who had a little sit-down, an interview regarding his relationship with Bishop Kevin Van. Not going to mention his name either. He is from Orange County. He is the bishop there. And Saddleback Church, because, again, we're keeping names out of this, is located in Orange County, I think, somewhere. in It's in California, which is a lot like America. This was the interview that took place between these two men. And this is a perfect example of the type of unbiblical ecumenism that is afoot today. And that is why we are working on a Reformation celebration, which you will be able to see October 31st. Talk about providence. And we're going to be creating a product, I'm sorry, a resource from that called Evangelicals and Catholics Not Together. We'll be sharing more details on the Reformation celebration. I believe it's going to be in our Facebook page. I believe NRB TV and other networks are going to be carrying it. Steve Lawson, outstanding. Phil Johnson is going to be at the Masters University Choir, is going to be singing. It's outstanding. And by the way, this is simply a part of the new things that we're doing here in Wretched. I've been hinting at this a wee bit. October 2nd, major changes here. All for the good. Nothing has changed. We're not suddenly Jehovah's Witnesses. We didn't become Mormons. We're still doing the same thing that we've always done, but we're doing more to reach more people. We want to be creating more ways of getting out the gospel, equipping the saints, strengthening the local church, and we're doing that uh, courtesy of you. And so we'll share more details on that October 2nd. Big changes are coming. Very very exciting, not the least of which is producing programs like the Reformation Celebration and Evangelicals and Catholics Not Together. And I'd like to know where my glasses went, which is kind of funny because, ah, if I had my glasses on, I'd be able to see my glasses. That must be a dilemma that's been going on for a long time. So here we go. The exchange between a high-profile evangelical with a Catholic together. This is the type of ecumenism the Bible says, no, no, no. 2 John 9, don't give a greeting to anybody who comes to your door who is a false teacher. Societally, in that context, it meant don't do anything that demonstrates you're giving some sort of approval to somebody who's a false teacher. Now, that's a strong enough warning. Imagine if if, if that, if the writer of of 2 John, who is... uh, John, if he, if he had heard about an evangelical and a Catholic praying together, doing ministry together, uh, I think the I think the apostle of love's head would explode. Here it is, said the high profile evangelical, nameless Rick Warren said. Since I moved to Orange County in 1980, I've known each of the previous bishops of Orange, but Bishop Kevin and I became dear friends very quickly. Okay. Can we become friends with Roman Catholics? Yes. Dear friends, best friends, 2 Corinthians 6, what does light have to do with darkness? There is still a difference between Rome and Protestantism, which is why we're actually thinking about calling these specials post tenebras rex. Lex, <laughs> that's different. Lux. After, after... What is that? Did I say Lex? Oh, Lex would be law. You said Lex. Lux, After right, exactly. Post ten out of darkness, law. No, light, Lux. Thank you, Joey. That was the battle cry. A battle cry of the Protestant Reformation. Hold on one second. I just have to dust off my Latin. That was one of the battle cries of the Protestant Reformation. It is dark. The Roman Catholic Church has has has, has led astray so many people 
from the truth. When did that happen? Yeah, it depends on which historian you talk to. Started to wobble and wander away, fourth, fifth, 500, somewhere in that little bit, little bit, little bit. And all of a sudden, by the time of the Middle Ages, complete perversion of not only theology, but an awful lot of debauchery going on in the Vatican. Has anything changed theologically? And it would appear there's plenty of reports of the debauchery business still alive and well to boot. This is verboten. Well, then, when I heard that the bishop had read a portion from one of my wife's books as an illustration, well, that sealed our friendship. I knew he was a wise man. Now, he went on to say, first, how did your friendship, how did it grow? Asked the interviewer. First, we committed to pray for each other. Um, I'm sorry, I wouldn't ask a Roman Catholic to pray for me. <laughs> I just... Those prayers are not efficacious. Those prayers are not being heard, especially if they're offered to a saint or to Mary. Furthermore, isn't that saying to somebody who is not in the faith, hey, your prayers are being answered by God? No. No, they're not. First, we committed to pray for each other. Then we began to pray for each other. Prayer builds bridges from heart to heart. Not if there isn't unity. Early invited, uh, early on, I invited Kevin, that must be the Bishop of Arange, to browse my 35,000-volume ministry library that I've collected over 45 years. Being surrounded by the books that the great Christian thinkers and saints have written in the past 2,000 years is humbling. And as we sat and prayed together in that library, we remember that we are just two simple servants of God in a long line of Christian history. No... No, we're not. Evangelicals and Catholics are in two different streams. Or, if you'd like, one of them is a tributary, and the other one is not orthodox. One way we stay in touch is by texting personal prayer requests to each other. So clearly, praying together is something that this nameless fellow named Rick Warren does not concern himself with. I'm sorry. I've got a question for my Southern Baptist friends. Um, what's the denomination doing about this? This isn't just hinting that evangelicals and Catholics are together. This is actually practicing that evangelicals and Catholics are together. And I know there is great hesitation in the Southern Baptist denomination to criticize any of their own. And I think that there are some, some, I, I think there's there's some problems with it, but there's 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 some things about that that are indeed good. That we don't just fire in a circular firing squad, just shooting our... I get that. There's far too much of that in evangelicalism. On the other hand, there are times when somebody requires some attention and the spotlight should be shined on that person, no matter how high profile and popular and influential they are. Rick Warren. I'm, I mean, I'm sorry, the nameless person. Our friendship began with heart-to-heart -heart praying together. It grew to a working hand-in-hand -hand together on projects where Christians can offer a compassionate response to those in need and also stand together with clear and united voice in opposing evil. Huh. Can we do that with a Buddhist? With a Mormon? Don't think so. Why would he do that with Roman Catholics? Now... The interviewer said, what has been the greatest blessing of your friendship and partnership? The uh, Bishop of Orange said, first, creating the bonds of faith. Friendship and ministry between Rick and Kay and myself have been a great blessing to me personally. Then the fellowship and partnership. Partnership? That's what 2 Corinthians 6 is about. We know unbelievers. We love Roman Catholics. We can be friends with them. Partnering with them? Uh-uh. They're not, they're not co-laborers in the field. Uh, they are the harvest field. They need to hear the gospel. They need to hear Romans 1.17, that the just shall live by faith, not by faith and works. And maybe you're saying, oh, come on, that you don't understand. That's the emails that I will receive because of this, that, 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 that I just don't simply understand the Roman Catholic faith. I do. Just go read the Roman Catholic Catechism. For instance, number 846, 
Basing This is the Roman Catholic Catechism. Basing itself on scripture and tradition, the council teaches that the church, a pilgrim now on earth, is necessary for salvation. Roman Catholics believe if you don't go through the Roman Catholic Church, you're not saved. Baptism. Catholic Catechism, 1257. Baptism is necessary for salvation. Boom. The end. What is this nameless Rick Warren fellow doing? And may I ask respectfully to the Southern Baptist denomination, what are you doing? They've done events together. They've done services together. Rick Warren stated, I completely agree with my friend. The Bible mentions the same three benefits that Kevin just did, and he lists them, that we can get more done together. And finally, our Lord Jesus Christ told us in John 13 that our love for each other is the proof of our faith. He also said in John 17 that we have unity based in what? The truth. This is evangelicals and Catholics together at one of the most high-profile levels. The Protestant reformers, I am certain, would say this is verboten, especially the German reformers. This is Wretched Radio. Thanks for listening to the Wretched Segment du Jour. If you'd like more Wretched, you can listen to the most current stream for free at wretched.tv slash listen, or you can become a club member and listen to our entire archive. Wretched, reaching the lost, equipping the saints, and strengthening the local church.